How's it going, guys? It's uh, Sunday, around 9.30. Yeah, 9.35, close enough. I uh, just took down all my collectibles that were here, hanging up here, all over here and whatever. Anything that was AMC related, gave it to Junior. He's getting into the AMX bug, obviously. He's getting ready to drive his AMX soon. So, I figured the cars are gonna get wasted in here anyway. <laughs> Even though they've been here for, some of the cars have been here 18, 19 years already. So, he cleaned them all up, brought them in the house. I found this one in the forward part of the garage. He was supposed to, it's a skateboard ramp. He was supposed to hold it by the steering wheel and the shifter and do tricks. Just like the picture shows. And it comes with different shifters, different wheels, lug wrench, and stuff like that. And it's an AMX, 68 and 69 AMX. So that was cool. You can see there's a holdup on the car. And the holdup is me. It isn't the car at this point. Now it's me. Uh, nothing going on. Nothing bad. You know, besides the holiday. Which was good. A um, couple of things. Two major problems I'm having right now in my head. One is color. Believe it or not. If you... I haven't been talking about it, but it's been going on for a while. Color, color, color. Uh, since I've gone this far in the body, do I bring it back to the original color and do the white roof like I always wanted to do? Or do I do it satin black, put it together and call it done? Okay, that's a big decision right now and I haven't mentioned it. Because I really, not that I don't want anybody's opinion, but I don't want to base my decision on what somebody else likes. I'm trying to say that nicely, <laughs> you know. I'm, you know, I don't mean anything bad by that. Uh, that's something I'm working out. And two, I don't want to use this paint gun. I want to paint like I used to paint. And I used to have, I talked about it a thousand times. It was a DeVilbus, but it said Mac on it. I bought it in 1989. It was a siphon feed gun. And the thing laid like glass, no matter what went through that gun. Uh, did a lot of enamel through it in the beginning. Never had an orange peel problem, nothing. It always atomized beautifully. Then I did some uh, base coat clear coat. I did the stripe and the flares and the doors and everything on my motorhome, which was 28 feet long. That was one hell of a paint day, I can tell you that. Uh, laid like glass again. I did my, I did a three quarter nose on my Gallant when the guy, uh, when the guy shot out of the parking lot and tagged my wife, never had a problem. That was a uh, base coat, clear coat, urethane. Then that was it, then I stopped painting. And as time went on, it left, to say the least, the gun. Um, I pretty much traded it off for car parts in so many words. Actually, the right fender that's on this car <laughs> was what it was traded off for. But uh, I want to come back. That's what I want, that's what I want to use. I've been looking, my only problem is, I found a couple of the guns. Some of them, uh, oof. They look like they've been stored in a well. Some of them are good, some of them are from the people that used to use them, that claim they're up and going. My problem is, I don't remember what size tip was on the front of it. And they don't do it the same way on a siphon gun. You don't have a 1.4 or whatever it is. They were like number 36s, number 74s, number 80s, number 86s. And I, for the life of me, I don't have a clue of what tip was on my gun. I have no way of knowing. And I'm trying to find information on the gun itself. Because like I said, in the early days, Mac put their name on it, but it was a developer's. Uh, the one I had, had a quick release cup where you just turned it with your thumb. You had the two hooks that spun around hooked under the cup. When you looked inside the cup, the cup was Teflon coated. Which I think in 89 or something like that, I think was a newer feature. It made it beautiful to clean. It was like, it was like effortless to clean the cup out. Uh, those are some of the things I do remember about it. And, uh... 
I just don't know what tip. A couple of them I've seen have all different tips on them. And uh, I'm having trouble finding out what tip would be required and where to get another one. So, and it seems like the guns themselves have lasted the test of time, but it's always a problem whether the guy has the cup or not. You know, and it's not just missing the cup, it's missing that upper part, it's missing the siphon tube. So, but that's basically where I stand. Me and doing this the way I want to do it is my concern. And there's, there's a way I want to do it, and I'm not giving in. That's all I gotta say. So with that, uh, I saw um, well, I saw a bunch of videos. I saw um, Tom Noble's video. That calls come along very nice. Um, the ribs made me hungry, but I don't eat ribs. <laughs> I saw Rubes the stand sanding away again. Uh, that looks good, Ruben. Um, I saw Darren's video with the. Uh, putting the crank together today and it's funny he talked about the assembly lube clogging holes because the conversation Saturday night with some of the guys up there at cruise night some some of my buddies I haven't seen in a while stopped up and one of the guy runs a 71 Javelin AMX he has a 401 in it aluminum headed motor a uh, bunch of stuff on a really sweet car 5 speed in it he's had this car forever and I have pictures of the suspension, but I never took pictures of the car. My buddy Mike crawled underneath. It's got this, I don't know who makes the suspension. He said it, I forgot already. But it's got rack and pinion in the front. It's got uh, normal, unequal, upper and lower eight control arms now. The whole kit, the kit actually wraps up the side of the car and the control arms come off it. And then it's got uh, coil over shocks in it. So that eliminates uh, Rambler's strut rod that points to the back, which interferes with your headers, all that stuff is gone. The trunnions, well he wouldn't have had trunnions in 71, but it, all that stuff is gone. Lightens up the front end, he can lower and raise the front end. He has the front end a little higher than he wants because of the massive headers that are on his car. He's actually working with somebody uh, to have, he's looking for inch and seven eighths shorty headers to be made with three and a half inch flanges. And a guy he knows bought up the rights to the shorty headers that Edelbrock was making. So, but he doesn't want the guy to produce the AMC headers with inch and five eighths tubes. He wants them bigger. And there's a lot of guys out there like me that would want them. You know, so we don't have our headers dragging on the ground. Well, not on this car, but just in general. So he's working on that. And, uh, but the, back to the conversation AMC lubes the front. Uh, bearing journal of the cam okay then it walks down these troughs it comes out these troughs so it's pressurized in then it goes out these troughs underneath the cam gear and in front of the cam gear is the distributor gear so it comes out there and it lubes the cam gear and the distributor gear one of the motors he did he assembled it and he wasted the cam gear he wasted the distributor gear and cam gear Buys a match set again, puts it on, it wastes them again. To make a long story short, even with the runtime on that motor, that assembly lube was too thick to make it through that weep hole. And he wasted two sets of gears before he realized the oil was not coming out that weep hole to lube those two gears. Now, a lot of AMC guys, do I have a picture in the engine? It's hard to make it out right here, but the front cover is right here. A lot of them drill the front cover. And screw in a line and pinch it down to a pinhole and it sprays the two gears and it comes right out of your oil pump it comes around it's a little copper line that you use for like your oil pressure gauge but they pinch it down to a very small opening he has that but he's yet to use it because he corrected the problem so and I know a lot of guys swing both ways on that that's why I didn't bother doing it to the engine so a lot of guys use it don't use it but yeah that assembly lube can wreak havoc if it gets in the wrong places. It's amazing how it can't get blown through.